Hey everyone, going to do a quickie update as I'm in Yosemite and the internet is pretty awful, which is kind of a good thing, but it takes two hours to upload a video. So I'm going to do the big four here and we'll look at IIPR looking very quickly and going to go over a trade I did on Friday, keeping in mind that we have a chat room of 800 people. So there is transparency. I'm not just hindsight trading here. Uh, everything that I do, I do post in real time there. So checking in on WEED, we have a pullback. We have the sell the news scenario on the NASDAQ or the NYSE listing, which is not surprising because we ran 20% plus heading into that move. And we already knew the news was coming. When you know the news is coming, it gets priced into the market. The market is very good at pricing in known events. And we had multiple chances to do that. First off, when Bruce came on and said it was coming in May. Then when we got the approval letter from the NYSE, we saw another leg up. And then we saw the climax with the profit taking. And now we're looking for an entry. I'm looking for an entry. I made a bullish entry on Friday and flipped it for some nice profit. And that was just a very quick trade because I had to leave. And fortunately for me, uh, that was a nice motivator to lock that profit in because it did not hold up. So what we're looking at on the daily chart is a pullback and we will form a higher low. The last higher low is down at 31.41. So we will form a higher low compared to that level and we're likely going to form a daily equilibrium. So a higher low is going to form. We're going to bounce and form a lower high and the range is going to tighten up through next week, in my opinion. So on the four hour time frame, we pull back, we can see it's, you know, no huge red flags. There's definitely a lot of volume here. So we can't disregard that. And we have multiple inside bars forming right now showing the tightening range. So the hourly chart, we pulled back and we leveled out at the end of the day. And if we see more downside on Tuesday, I will be Oh, actually we trade Monday. That's right. I might have to miss that opportunity. I doubt I probably will. So if you are able to trade on Monday, and we see further downside, this hourly RSI at oversold is a good entry opportunity, in my opinion, for a longer term play, not necessarily maybe for a day trade, possibly for a day trade. But even if you're just looking a couple days out, hourly RSI, if we drop down and break 3466, I would be a buyer personally down in the low 34s or maybe a break of 34 and a little uh, final volume climax flush. There's also another potential opportunity where if the bulls can hold that low of 3466, that acts as our base of support. And it is a double bottom at this point. So stop losses below that level will trigger on Monday if it breaks, in my opinion. But if it holds, it's a very clear level to be watching for some bounce. So I do believe there's a nice bounce entry. I personally am going to probably miss it because I'm traveling, but that's fine. So checking in on the bounce play on Friday. Personally, I was looking for a flush first thing in the morning to make an entry initially, and we did not get that. So that told me, okay, that's not what you were anticipating. Don't go through with your plan. Back off and take things, you know, five minute candlestick at a time and reestablish a new plan. So we saw the first bull move. Then when we hit a new low of the day, I said, okay, now it's time to be looking for an entry again. But when we hit that new low of the day, the five minute RSI was not as oversold as I wanted it to be to be comfortable in an entry. I was watching the 15 minute RSI and knowing how low that was, I was very comfortable entering a position, but I just wanted to be a little bit picky waiting for that five minute RSI as well. So at that point, the 15 minute RSI was under 20, five minute RSI dropped down. We had this little bounce attempt that saw a lack of follow through. Then when we hit the new low of the day, I said, all right, I'm going to watch 35 psychological. If we break 35 psychological, I'm going to be looking for that to be the climax as the bottom. So as soon as we broke 35 psychological, I scaled in half of my position at 3590. And then I added to it multiple times. And it was a nice slow bounce here. We had a little bullish reversal candlestick and then a higher low formed. So I entered, it ended up being three or four positions that I entered and I went all into my account. Uh, with an average of about 3590, 35 or 3490, 3492 or so. And at that point, I was extremely comfortable being all in again because the 15 minute RSI at that point was down at 12. And so, if you give me single digit 15 minute RSI, unless there's bad news behind it, I'm not worried about it at all. And that's why I was comfortable going all in. So then I scaled out on the bounce. Initially, the first bounce, I scaled out and just locking in profit the whole way. And on this candlestick, this last five minute candlestick signaling the top of the bounce, I exited uh, the majority of my position, or maybe not the majority. At that point, it was probably about a third of my position, but I exited, you know, 35, uh, 30, 35, 40, and exited the last with market order at the top to just bail because I had to leave for the day and I just wanted to lock in a week maker for that trade. And personally, I'm, I'm glad that we didn't see any more bounce follow through because that gives me another potential opportunity. But overall, a uh, nice quick short term trade to give yourself full cash waiting for perhaps another downside or another leg down on Monday. Cron is in the weekly equilibrium pattern. It continues to get tighter and tighter. I have a swing position in Cron that I'm at about break even on. I did take some profit initially on the move up last week. 
but must hold support on the weekly is 550 and resistance is 685. So that's the weekly equilibrium to be watching. We have tighter da daily levels to be watching. So we're going to break on the daily time frame before we break on the weekly time frame. And right now the range that we're watching here is support of 576 and resistance of 668. So I will personally exit this trade if we break Probably if we break 576 and then I'll look for a re-entry down around 550 to see if the bulls can hold the weekly equilibrium. So we have a daily equilibrium that has different levels than the weekly equilibrium. That's important to recognize and determine which time frame you're going to be trading based off of. But the bulls need to see some follow through. So if WEED does get the final little bottom of this pullback on the daily chart on Monday with the U.S. markets closed, then we'll be looking for the potential of Cron to bounce back up and stay within this tightening range and make its way to the mid $6 range. So real tight pattern, definitely keep an eye on Cron. There's going to be a trade there uh, this coming week, most likely, if not this week, certainly next week. APH pulling back from resistance of 1314 on the weekly time frame. We're looking for a higher low on the weekly compared to 963 to keep the bulls in control. Daily chart did get a little high, uh, lower high and lower low. So that is very notable uh, shift in momentum. But as far as the weekly chart is concerned, it's not a major shift. So here's that support. 1090 is a level to be watching. Bulls want to hold a higher low compared to 1090. But really, the weekly time frame, especially if you're a swing trader, is what we're looking at. And we are looking to pull back further. If 1167 breaks, we're still looking to pull back. And 1090 will be the next level that we're watching, along with 11 psychological. So always watch the hourly time frames. A nice hourly oversold bounce on APH yesterday. Increasing bull volume on the bounce is a good sign. So 1167, bulls want to hold... Bulls are likely going to top out, form a lower high on the hourly, and then they need a higher low and a higher high to convincingly shift the trend in their favor. So APH weekly chart looks just fine and need the hourly trend to change for the bulls to find a daily support level. So we'll be watching to see. This is a, a healthy consolidation pattern at this point. And if we were to drop down to 1090, that would change things. But if we can hold 1167 and make our way back over 12, this is still very healthy daily consolidation. ACB on the weekly time frame, setting another lower high. It is definitely the laggard out of everybody. Resistance is 877 here. Daily time frame, we have a top. We're pulling back. We will form a higher low because the low is all the way down at 717. Watch the hourly RSI, the hourly RSI getting down towards oversold. And if we see another leg down and break 797 support, this hourly RSI will get right towards oversold. So after 797, looks like filling a gap at 793. And then I would be looking down at a support level of 752. And there's a, a lot of space within here. So if you do see another leg down, make sure and wait for that hourly RSI to get oversold before you look to start scaling in. And in this bullish market, ACB, not as bullish as the other names on the weekly time frame, but I love hourly oversold entries when we're in bullish uptrends on the daily and weekly time frame. I'm very comfortable making those trades. IIPR, I've been highlighting for the cup and handle pattern on the weekly time frame. We got the bull break to a new all-time high on Friday. So this is textbook cup and handle. Cannot get more perfect left side, left side of resistance, pullback, unable to break the, alt, the left side, healthy consolidation, and then there's our break. Look at the volume spike to go along with it. The daily chart's a bit extended, though, so we can anticipate healthy consolidation in the short term. I'm in a swing swing position, and I'm not taking it off in anytime soon because it's a dividend stock as well, and I want to lock in those dividends. And I believe the next dividends are in one month at the end of June. But it's a bearish reversal candlestick on Friday. But look at the, the seven green days in a row. Increasing bull volume. It's everything the bulls want to see. And we could pull back to the $34 range and still be very healthy on this daily chart. Ideally, the bulls want to hold 35. 35 was a really tough resistance. So if we can hold 35 on a back test of support, that'd be a great sign. And our new resistance is 37.48. So last time we made you know a bull break to all-time highs, it was an insane run. But keeping in mind that the volume hadn't really shown up to that point, and at this point, we had been running for six days when that all-time high was hit. So the preceding action when you're heading into a new all-time high is definitely important. And in this instance, it does indicate that we might consolidate shortly after hitting that all-time high, but there's no red flags there because of seven green days in a row. And anything above 3180 is a higher low on the daily time frame. So the bulls are just fine. So I appreciate you watching. We'll be back to normal internet next week and have a good rest of your weekend.